Joey, uh, go ahead and um, kick us off. <clears throat> All right. So big surprise. I'm going to talk about NXT again. But yeah. what happened with this? Yes, Bob. So what <laughs> happened with this is for the past few weeks, um, occasionally main roster people will go to NXT. But oftentimes, too, NXT will intermingle with NXT UK, which, yes, is still alive. I don't know what their heart rate is, but it's not too great. And so when it comes to this, what had happened was the previous NXT UK tag team champions were injured. They had to relinquish it. And ironically, at the same time, the tag team of uh, Brooks Jensen and Josh Briggs, who are country boys, very much a PG version of APA almost, won the belts in the UK. This upset a team called Pretty Deadly who I would describe as a more flamboyant version of Tyler Breeze that's British. They are kind of like model-esque, very much like they say yes boy, for instance, to support each other. There'll be slow motion with the John Morrison hair flowing and everything. And so what they did to this country boy tag team was they started teasing them and dressing up like country boys themselves. And with the British accents, it was hilarious. And what they came out with this week then on NXT to build up to this match that took three weeks to build to through funny segments was they came out in the attire of cowboy hats, brown cowboy pants, and what I would describe as like sleeves with like cow print on them but their whole chest was showing it was as flamboyant as you could get and i loved it and they were saying ignorant phrases like roll tide even though neither of those guys are from alabama (laughs) just stuff like that it just (laughs) ignorant heel stuff like that was too funny and then you got wade barrett on commentary saying they put the sex in essex which is a town in in england just hilarious old school heels up. They lost the match, of course, but I just loved it. And so that attire and just that pushing it further, the reason for the matches, love it. Bob, yours is actually from well, the same promotion as last week. Or do you want to comment on mine first? Correct. Uh, thank you, Joey. Um, I'm coming back with you guys with some impact news. Um, this week on impact, the main event was, was um, Alex Shelley versus Chris Saban in the main event. And I thought these two put on a phenomenal match. Again, these guys are partners. Chris Saban, a former uh, TNA world champion. Again, it was a great match with the victor being Alex Shelley, making Chris Saban tap out to the border city, border city stretch, being the new number one contender to Josh Alexander's T- or Impact World, world Heavyweight Champion at T- uh, Impact's Emergence live August 12th. Here in the, at the Cicero, Cicero Stadium, right, Joey? Yeah. Cicero. Yes, yes. Great promo work as well, Bob, for supporting them. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. Look, I I, I kind of died out back in 2015, all the way up to like maybe within like the last year with TNA slash Impact. But man, they've been putting on some phenomenal work when it comes to in ring action, when it comes to wrestling. Not the sports entertainment bullshit. But when it comes to wrestling, these guys have been putting a banger week after week. So, hey, Chris Haven and Alex Shelley, get my ah, French kiss of the week. But, Joey, go ahead and tell us our combo French kiss of the week. I just want to point out that you said French kiss and not chef's kiss. So, Bob's fantasies are about Chris Saban and Alex Shelley. Nothing wrong with that. I just want to clarify that you said French kiss. So, I'm, I will support you, Bob. Hardy anyway. Barn for Bob. Yeah, he deserved it with that time, I would say, because he said French kiss. Look, look, Joey, look, I love the French, all right? Look, I just can't help myself, man. I love the French. There, there, there's <laughs> cuisine in, in, in France. But one of the best um, restaurants are in France. Bob, I will say I would French kiss you any day. Hey, and I'll totally accept it. No homo here, guys. Look. I'll I'll do it too, hey, Bob. I kiss, I kiss the homies. That's all I'm saying. Hey, hey, he said it, guys. He said it. But anyway, Joey, let's go ahead. Let's wrap this. Let's wrap this. Yeah, all right, up. all right. Main let's course, wrap- main course, main <laughs> course. Kiss of the week. Okay, so uh, 
so one of my favorite segments to build up to this of all time that the New Day has done was a rap battle they did with the Usos during their seemingly never-ending feud. I think, oh, yeah. Bob, do you remember who the host of that was? Was it I, Wale? Wale. Wale. Yep. And just funny stuff like that about like the Jamaican accent being Jafakin, Xavier Woods and uh, Brad Maddox and Page's rendezvous being subtly mentioned. Funny stuff like that. I don't, like, I remember that segment more than I remember any of their infinity number of matches. And so when I heard that, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, for the first time, AEW was going to have a rap battle. Mm-hmm. For the first time, my, it made Rampage, which sometimes isn't a, much, a must watch, a must watch for me. And they, I thought, killed it. Lil Scrappy, who I've not heard of before, but Lil Scrappy was the, uh, the moderator. He's OG. Yes. Bob, Eddie comments on Lil Scrappy. Of course, Joey didn't hear. He doesn't know who Little Scrappy is. It's okay, Joey. <laughs> I know <laughs> of uh, Little Look. Wayne and Little John, but how is Little Scrappy? You're putting a lot of... You're, you're how was Little, Hang Little, on. Little, how was... He did the Money in the Bank song. Thank you. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> How Rob. was Little Scrappy's performance, Bob? We'll talk about him first before we talk about the actual rappers. Um, dude, he did well. He he wasn't bad out there. He he did just as decent as Wale or as any rapper being on stage in front of AEW or WWE has. You know, I thought he was a little more talkative than previous rap battles, like with his like, oh, like he sounded like Andrew Dice Clay up there. But that's just me. He might have gotten oh. a little. It might have ad-libbed a little bit but i i thought he was fine now as far as some of these killer lines oh, and yeah. things that i learned that i didn't know before austin gunn bringing up that uh max the- caster used to date chris statlander who they both trained at a uh, creative pro what a guy about about uh max caster being one of bobby lashley's sisters in that infamous segment lest we forget <laughs> it, i completely that went over my head i'm like what i went so, back- and yeah, I, saw back. Back, I saw a picture and I'm like, holy shit, that is him. It's so him in the face too. But, yeah. and so just like these segments that sort of like wink and nod at the audience, but not as deliberate as like a Brit Baker handing a sandbag to Thunder Rosa. Like this I <laughs> thought was much more creative than like that. And like respected the intelligence of the audience rather than just being like sandbag, get it? Ha ha, dad joke. So lines like that. And then Cass are coming back talking about, um, for instance, the only reason Tony brought the ROH library was to set your two matches in it on fire. Because Austin then had two matches there before he was really a known guy. Just funny stuff. And overall, a good job by both performers. I actually thought Austin killed it specifically. I thought he was fantastic. Agreed with you, Joey. Austin Austin uh, uh, Corrupt. John Cena wants his gimmick backline. That was pretty funny. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And so it was just a great mix of like insider stuff, um, mainstream, something that I wish that they would do more often are these little fun segments like this. Like I told Bob, our backup chef's kiss this week, if you didn't like the rap battle, was going to be the whole Swerve and Keith Lee celebration with an eventual, uh, not pie in the face, but cake in the face to ignorant Mark Sterling. Like, just these segments to really break up the monotony of just wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. AEW needs to do more of these, in my opinion. And they knocked it out of the park with this one. Bob, anything to add for our chef's kiss? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm going to say, who did you think won that rap battle? I would honestly say Austin uh, Gunn. He kind of, like, just, like, played into the character for, like, I don't have a response. Ugh. But his first stuff was... Was good. All great, yeah. Yeah. I, I I agree. I know Little Scrappy, he awarded it the W to the acclaim, but dude, the Aspos came with some heat. I dude, I shit. I, I thought it was a great promo. Uh, it definitely deserved our chef kiss of the week, our combo chef kiss of the week. So I know absolutely guys, if you guys have anything else to add or move I'm on. Just, I'm just glad that you know you were able to experience a rap battle on national television. I brought up uh, New Day in the Usos, Rich. Yes. I know, but like, I know, but like a, a rap battle, like in Atlanta. Come on, well, everybody was there. Jermaine Dupree, Kevin Gates, yeah, yeah, West Little West crap. Side. Yep, it was like, everybody was there. It was Atlanta, so that's the like. It was like. 
you had no choice with this rap battle. It's like all these. Uh, it was given. It was given. All these rap artists were there. It, it was great. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, Jelly, for for doing 